Hallelujah. Someone asked me, and I was coughing and all of that, and my throat was hurting and yes. aching all over. Somebody asked me, how are you going to be able to preach? And yes. I was saying, well, I always preach. He's going to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, my, my, my. Thank you, Lord. Praise so you. thankful Praise for His you, Spirit, for His anointing. Yes, Lord. Hebrews, the first, the 11th chapter, the first and <clears throat> second verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy today to tell you that I, I realize that's how I'm going to obtain a good report today. Yes. Amen. By faith. That faith that Brother Sleese was talking about. Every man has been given a measure of faith. On, you put your faith in a lot of different things. On, Amen. Brother. Even atheists, they put their faith in the fact that there is no God. Come on, Amen. It. All of us use faith in one measure or in one way or the other, that measure of faith that has been given to us. But we have been learning and we have seen over and over again in the Word of God, yes. example after example, that there's only one object of faith that God will recognize and accept. And that is faith in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. And last week I said something and I thought a little bit about it at the time but later whenever I went back to edit the, the sermon to put it on the computer and different things when I was listening to it over again, the Holy Spirit brought out something that really was not in my notes which is what He does a lot of times. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And as a matter of fact, if you saw my notes sometimes after my sermon, you would think, well, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He didn't preach that right there. That's because the Lord leads in a different direction yeah. and we don't get to all the notes. But that's all right. Amen. Hallelujah. But the, I told you as a minister, many times the Lord will bring something around or you'll preach something and you'll think, well, why am I preaching this? They should know this. The people out there that are listening by radio, the church should know this. Yes. And that's the way I have felt some part of the time while preaching this series of sermons. But the more that I see the things that the church is doing, the more I realize the church really don't know this. That's right. Amen. Right. The more I receive what the religious crowd is up to, I really see that they really don't know this. Amen. And the, the Holy Spirit said something along these lines. That this is the message that was preached in the beginning. From Genesis to Revelation, we see this message. This is the message that Jesus preached. This is the message that the disciples preached. This is the message that the Apostle Paul preached. And the Lord is bringing this back to the forefront, Brother Dave, yes. and hammering this home in the day in which we live as time is running out for this purpose yes. to give man another opportunity to accept the message or to reject the message. Amen? Amen. Because of His mercy, because of His grace, He is bringing the message of the finished work of the cross to the forefront to America's attention, to the attention of the world one more time before this thing wraps up. Letting them know that there is hope in only one name. And that name, He will not share the altar with Buddha. He will not share the altar with Muhammad. He will not share the altar with Hare Krishna. He will not share the altar with Nostradamus. He will not share the altar with the Hindus and the, everything they worship. He will not share the altar with all of the false gods. He will not, he would not share the altar, the temple with Dagon. He will not share the altar and the temple with any god that you set up today. Amen. He is God and besides Him there is no other. He said, I am Amen. the Lord. I am the Lord thy God. Worship no other God yeah. besides me. You can set up your, your statue of the devil in front of the courthouse. You can set it up next to the Ten Commandments, but I've got news for you. He will not share the spotlight with no other God. He is a jealous God. He is a God of mercy, yes. A God of love, yes. But He is a God of judgment. And sooner or later, His judgment will come. And the only protection from that judgment is the blood of Jesus. Faith in the blood of Jesus. You can join hands with the other religions of the world and you can say, well, we're all going to become one. No, not in God's kingdom, you're not. 
There's only one way to get there. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, He was not talking about just after the cross. He was talking about that He had always been the way. He had always been the only way to get to the Father. Faith in Him, faith in the promise that God had promised, the Old Testament saints had been the only way. The only way. And I know I've said this and I've been repetitive. But when you get to heaven and when you talk to Abraham, you're going to find that Abraham got there the same way you did. When you talk to Jacob and you talk to Isaac, you're going to find out that they got there the same way that old Sleece Butler of Livermore, Kentucky got there, and that is faith in the promised one. Faith in the finished work. Oh, hallelujah. Faith in the finished work that took place on Calvary. Come on, preach to us, Brother Billy. And the church needs this because the church is preaching everything but this. Yes. Everything to get the attention of the world. Amen. Everything and anything except the message. Yes. Except that which really brings forth life. The truth. The Bible says that God's Spirit will not always strive with man. Come on. And a lot of people say, well, it's too late. But I know today it's not too late, and I know that God's Spirit is still striving with man because He has not shut up the heavens yet. Come on, brother. He has not shut up the truth yet. Come on, pray. The truth is still being preached. Now, granted, yes. you can't hear it as much as you can the other because the other is louder. Got a lot more people preaching the other junk yes. and the other garbage. Come on. So it's a little harder to hear the truth. Amen. Yes. But you can discern what is truth and what is not. If we can get that ear that Jesus spoke about when He said, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen? He that hath an ear. Oh God, give us an ear to hear what you have. Not what man says. Not what the best seller says, but what you say to your people today. Jesus proclaimed in Matthew 24 and 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for the witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This gospel, was He talking about the prosperity gospel? No. Was He talking about the self-esteem gospel? No. He was talking about the message of the Bible. The message of the cross. True. All the way through from the first book to the last. Exactly. The message of the of the cross. Behold the Lamb of God exactly. who takes away the sin of the world. You might say to them, well, I'm reaching the world. Yeah, but what are you reaching the world with? Yeah. Amen? You can boast and puff out your chest and say, well, we're reaching the world. Yeah, but what are you taking them? What are you giving to them? The largest church in the United States. I don't know how many thousands of members they have. Don't have to tell you their name. They had, they had to get them a, an old basketball arena is where they have their church at. The largest attendance of any church in America. And they will not... You, don't, you won't see a cross anywhere. You won't see any religious symbols anywhere. Why? Because they do not want to offend people. i got news for you. The Word of God will offend you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Word of God will... It will not pat you on the back and soothe your flesh. The Word of God will offend you. Amen. Say, well, I want to go to a church where I don't feel bad and I won't be offended. Well, you can find a lot of those. But they will not lead you the right way because the Word of God will offend your flesh. Amen. The Word of God will offend us. Amen. True. But through that offense comes the truth. Yes. Yeah. Amen. I heard some people talking yesterday in the dollar store, and I was looking for on the cereal aisle. I could hear them on the other aisle. I'd be lying if I said I didn't listen close because they said something that caught my attention. They were talking about their church, and they were talking to another gentleman who was witnessing to them and was talking about the Lord. And they said, "We have a friend. He won't. He don't. He won't come to our church because he feels like he's being judged." And the guy said, well, tell him to come on to our church. He won't feel like he's being judged there. Yeah. Huh. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong. There is an old judgmental spirit that people can have. Yeah. But most of the time, when they talk about that, it's Holy Ghost conviction they've been feeling when they go there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, now, well I, I don't feel. They don't make me feel. When I go there, I don't feel good. Yeah. yeah, it's because you can't live in sin and come before the presence of God and feel okay about it. Come on. Amen. Come on. You can't cover up that. 
and expect to stand in the presence of God and not feel bad about it. Exactly. Old fashioned Holy Ghost conviction will make you feel bad. True. You won't be able to go to church and live as a whoremonger. You won't be able to go to church and live in adultery. You will not be able to go to church and live in fornication. Not and feel good about it. Come on, bro. Not if you get to a place where the old fashioned Word of God is being preached. A, a preacher that boasts of the fact that he has homosexuals in his crowd and they come every service and they worship right along with them and they never feel good. I'd watch what I boast about if I was you. Amen. Amen. That simply means you ain't preaching the Word of God. Amen. Right. A preacher that can boast about that. Well, we've got Muslims that sit in our church and they worship with us yeah. and they don't feel bad and they come here and they're just as happy as the Lord. I wouldn't boast about that if I was you because when you really preach the Word, somebody ain't going to feel good. Somebody's going to be offended. It's going to step on our toes. Amen. It's going to step on our toes. Amen, brother. But the church has got so far off track that when you do stand for truth, yeah, well, they're so delusional and so brainwashed that they think you're the one that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. They believe that you're wrong. Right. We received an advertisement, and they'll probably wish they'd ever sent it to me, but for a event that was going on in Evansville at the Ford Center. This it hadn't been but two or three days ago now. Called Winter Jam 2014. Mm -hmm. Wanting churches to they're for their youth pastors to bring their youths in groups and even had a meeting for the youth pastors to meet there before the concert and they were encouraging churches to bring the youth to it and I thought well you know like I am I'm curious I, I thought well I'll look into this and I looked at ten different groups and I looked up three different ones and the only thing I could say was my Lord and my God <laughs> That may be a lot of stuff, but it ain't Christian. Amen? All right. It was rap and it was rock and it was and I realized, I realized that all music that's that worships the Lord don't have to be two two steps to the right of Ehaw. I know that. <laughs> but this was completely you couldn't hear the lyrics. They were jumping all you you would not know I, I trust me, you would not know the difference between that and a kiss concert. Wow. You would not know the difference between what they were doing and Def Leppard. And pastors encouraging their youth to go to that. Yeah. You see, the farther away you get from the cross, Come on. the deeper in false doctrine you get. Oh. Yeah. Amen. The farther you get from the message of the cross, mm -hmm. the more into preaching a message that does nobody any good. Absolutely. Churches all across our nation today will clean out their sanctuary and move their Bible stand and set up a TV yeah. and show the Super Bowl for their congregation Come on. and pass out hot dogs and popcorn on the pews. Yeah. I told Brother Tyler that this morning. I said there's a church having a Super Bowl party tonight. I had read about it. Mm. Said they're going to move out their Bible stand, going to set up a big screen TV, yeah. going to pass out snacks and stuff. Brother Isaac made one of those faces that only he can make. I ain't even going to try to do it. And he said, Sick! That sounds like a horrible church. Amen. <laughs> I said, Well, I couldn't say it no better than that. All right. True. Super Bowl Sunday, giving the church just one more chance to make themselves look spiritually stupid. All Amen. Right. Preachers preaching their sermons on the football field that they've got on their platform. Yeah. And I saw one had a halftime show. They were going to have that hippity hoppity bippity boppity music right in the middle of the half so their congregation would have a halftime show. Yeah. All of that to draw a crowd. My. Amen. You may draw a crowd to whatever event you're having, but you will not draw them to Jesus. Yeah. Not without the Word of God. Amen. You can dance from the time you come in the door until you can dance yourself right back out and think, boy, I really had me a boot scooting time. Come but on. if the Word of God is not preached, if Jesus Christ is not glorified, oh. if the message of the cross is not lifted up, i got news for you. If your message is anti-cross, it is anti-Christ. Amen? Amen? Because that's what He came for. That is the reason He came. Amen. Is the message of the cross. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I know that don't win me any brownie points. But you know, I have weighed the cost between compromise mm. and preaching the truth. Amen. 
And Brother Sleese, I found that the cost for compromise is far too dear to pay. Far too dear to pay. Amen. So we'll stand with the truth. Yes, sir. As long as the Lord allows us to stand. Yes, amen. Go with me to that in Hebrews, the second chapter. Hebrews, the second chapter. We're still we are still talking about faith. And our faith in what Jesus has done for us. Amen. Do you know what? And I've got to say this carefully because I don't want to offend. If I can get away with it, I don't want to offend people. But did you know whenever you say, well, yeah, it takes the blood of Jesus, but, but it also takes this. It also takes that. You know, in essence, what you're saying, you're saying that what Jesus did was not enough. It was not complete without your help. Mm -hmm. Think about that today. When you say that faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work, when you say that that is not enough, well, you know, that's, that's great and you're right, preacher, but we have to have this and we have to, have, we have to add these other things to it, these other religious things. You're in essence saying, God, that wasn't good enough. That's good, but that ain't good enough. You need our help. And that's what most of the church world has said today. We find in Hebrews, the second chapter, some stern words from the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul didn't tickle anybody's ears. Amen. Amen. Yeah. True. He didn't preach the prosperity gospel. Come on. Would look kind of silly for him to say, if you're going through anything today, if you're not rich today, if you're going through a trial, if you're sick, whatever the case may be, if anything like that's happening, you're not in God's will. It'd be kind of awkward for him to write that while he was sitting in jail. Amen. Without any money. Right. Amen. True. Jesus was not rich. Come on. The disciples were not rich. Right. You're not going to find a prophet in the Old Testament that was rich. None of the apostles were rich. If you look in the book of Acts, you won't find any there in the church that were rich because they brought all their money together and put it all together so that they could support the church, so that they could do the work of God. Come on. So none of those, not one single person in this Bible preaches the prosperity gospel. Yeah. None. Yeah. Come on. Not one. Yeah. Come on. Yet you stand before your mega crowd today and behind your pulpit yeah. and tell Christians that God wants you to be rich. Well, He ain't never wanted it. That ain't never been His plan. Not saying it's wrong if you are rich, but that's never been his message. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's never been his message. What did he do? Change his mind on something? Mm -hmm. That's never been the message of the Word of God. Amen. Having Jesus even looked at him and said, My kingdom is not of this world. Right. Amen. True. Yet we have a whole church world that tried to set up a kingdom right exactly. here on this earth. Absolutely. Amen. The Bible's very plain. It says where your treasure is. is. There will your heart be also. Now, you don't have to be poor to be close to God. Right. We're not saying that the less you have, the more of God you've got. But equating prosperity and riches to godliness, oh, that's wrong too. Some of the most wealthy men this world has ever known were also some of the most wicked men this world has ever Amen. known. Amen. Amen. True. So to equate riches with righteousness, you are way off track. True. That's just one of the crazy things that goes on in the church today. Mm. Hebrews 2 and beginning in the first verse. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them slip. Now in the Greek text, this slipping that it's talking about, it carries the idea of a ring slipping off of someone's finger. Regrettably, the church today has allowed the true message of the Bible to slip away. Oh, yeah. Amen. Has allowed the true message of the Bible to slip right out of their hands. There's an old country song, and I don't know it. I know the, the little bit of it. it says something about I had you right on the tips of my fingers, but I let you slip right through my hands. The, tr the church has allowed the truth to slip right through their Amen. fingers today. Exactly. Amen. The church has presently, as we know it today, has allowed the message of the cross and the message of the Bible to slip 
right through their fingers. Men and women taking a verse here and a verse there and cherry picking it so that they can preach their message or that they can push their agenda so that they can fill their pockets with your money. Amen? Truth. The Apostle Paul says we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. In other words, take care of them. Right. Diligently take care of that which you have been given, the gospel, the message, lest at any time we should let them slip. Amen? Let them slip out of our hands is what he's saying. Verse 2 says, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Look at verse 3 with me. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? If we neglect the cross today, we have destroyed ourselves. Come on. If we neglect to preach the truth today, the gospel, the message of the Bible, if we neglect to preach that, Brother Dave, how shall we escape? If the angels that rebelled with Lucifer Come on. were unable to escape the judgment of God, if all the, we, we've looked time and time again at people here in the Bible that were unable to escape the judgment of God because they put their way above God's way. We learned that with Cain and his altar that he sacrificed. We learned that there in Egypt, whenever the, the angel, whenever death came through and took the firstborn. <laughs> when death came through and took the firstborn, we learned that the only escape from that was the blood. When I see the blood, we learned from Noah and his ark that there was only one escape. There was no way to escape the judgment that was going to be poured out except getting onto the ark. How shall we escape today if we neglect? So great a salvation. If we deny the Son of God and the sacrifice that He made on Calvary's cross, if we stand today and say that's not enough, that's not good enough, that's not the answer, how shall we escape today if we neglect this great salvation? Come on. How shall we escape on, if we neglect so great a salvation? which at first began to be spoken by the Lord. Listen to me. Verse 3. It says, How shall we, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Come on. Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, talking about Jesus, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard Him. What was the message of Jesus Christ? The reason I came to lay down my life for a world that was lost and undone. His message was always the work that the Father had sent Him to do. And when He would tell them what that work was, <coughs> it was not to build a kingdom on this, in this life. It was to give His life on an old rugged cross. Amen. It was a decision that He had made from eternity past that He would come and be the sacrificial Lamb True. to not just cover up, but to take away the sin of the world. That was the message. And how shall we escape today if we neglect that salvation? What was the message of the disciples as they went forth? Peter, even on the day of Pentecost, to the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost, would stand up and say, This Jesus, who you evidently had seen crucified before you, yeah. he would stand there and tell them of the great sacrifice that Jesus made for them. Amen. The Apostle Paul, he said, I determined not to know anything among you yep. say Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. How shall we escape today if we neglect this great, great salvation, salvation, Brother Dave? Come on. There is no escape today if you reject the cross and the blood of the Lamb of God. There is no escape for you from the judgment to come. Judgment is coming. There is still a hell to shun today. And there's only one way for you to, for you to escape that judgment, and that is by the blood of the Lamb. Yes, good preaching. How shall we escape? There will be no escape if you neglect this great salvation. If we neglect the cross, if we neglect to preach the cross, how shall we escape? There will be no escape. Come on, brother. The word neglect there in the Greek means to be careless of. It means to make light of. It means to be negligent. It means to not regard it. In a sense, it means to have no interest in to let set unattended. 
and to lay aside. Come on. This message that we've been preaching, this series that we've been preaching over these last several weeks now, this message, this gospel of the cross has been neglected and laid aside by the church today. Yes, sir. They've done exactly that which Jeremiah the prophet spoke of in, second, uh, in the second chapter of the 13th verse. When he spoke the words of the Lord, he wrote them down, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewed themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. We see everything and anything else being uplifted other than Jesus in the church today. We see everything and anything being preached today in the church except for the message that Jesus preached, the message the disciples preached, the message that even the prophets of old preached. When prophets like, when prophets like Isaiah stood and said, Behold a virgin, she'll conceive and bring forth. Oh, hallelujah, she'll bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. For unto us a child is born and a son is given. Hallelujah. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the message of the prophets, the message of the disciples, the message of the apostles, the message of our Lord is being neglected today by the church as we know it. Amen. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. True. Listen to me. The message of your best life now is not the message of the Bible. Jesus did not preach that. None of the disciples preached that. The Apostle Paul did not preach that. The Bible is clear from start to finish that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Come on. And that while we are in this life, there will be trials. Yes. There will be sorrow. Come on. There will be tears. Right. There will be death. Oh, but there's coming a day. <laughs> oh, Brother Dave, I wish I could get some help this morning. There's coming a day. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more tears. No more sad goodbyes. No more death on the other side of the river. There is a heaven to come this morning, church. But it's not here on this earth. In essence, if you believe that you're going to have your best life now, that ain't saying much for you where you intend to spend eternity. Come on. Amen. You can't have your best life now. Amen. Not possible. Right. Because I have not seen and Amen. ear hath not heard that which He has in store for them that love Him. Oh, isn't that wonderful this morning? Amen. The power of positive thinking today is not the message of the Bible. Come on. The message of self-esteem is not the message of the Bible. As a matter of fact, self-denial is the message of the Bible. Yes, sir. <laughs> True. To realize that it is not within you. Oh. It's in Him. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. I ain't supposed to feel like preaching today. I said it's not within us. Come on. It's in Him. Right. The branch cannot do the the the, uh, the branch can do nothing without the tree. Absolutely. Amen. If you go out today to an apple tree. And you see a branch there and it's bringing forth big, beautiful apples. What happens when you disconnect that branch from the life source, oh. from the tree? Cut that branch off that has those, that beautiful fruit on it and cast it to the side. And what happens? The branch will wither and it will die. That's what's happening to the church today. We've never had more people coming in. We've never had better entertainers. We've never had better music. We've never had better programs. Yeah, but we've never had so less of the message of the Bible either. That's right. Amen. You, you cannot live if you disconnect yourself from the source. Yes, sir. Come on. You can throw the cross out because it offends people. You can throw the truth out because it offends people. And you can have a, you can have forty thousand people feeling good about themselves, and every one of you a dying split hell wide open if you throw away the cross and the message that it brings. There's only life in one, and that's Jesus Christ. Oh, I know that's gonna that's not gonna get me invited to the uh, the uh, the religious society that brings the Muslims together and, and the Buddhists together and the Christians together. I know. Come on. I ain't gonna get to talk to any of those folks. Because Jesus and you ain't either unless you compromise. That's right. You ain't either unless you compromise. Because Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. He's not a truth. He's the only truth. He's not a way. He's the only way. Amen. He's the only life. That's good. He's the only life. Oh, I could preach this morning. Hallelujah, if I ever get my life, I might do it. 
the blood still saves the loss. Yeah. It's still. <laughs> I better clear that up. I've got my license. Some dear saint. I used to say that quite often. But some dear saint asked somebody, says, he ain't licensed to preach. <laughs> I am licensed to preach. I'm just joking around. Not that that makes me any more of a preacher. Yeah, really. Amen. Not that that makes me any more of a preacher. Come on. Most preachers that we see in mega churches today, and I know this is going to sound bad, most preachers, and if not them, their message, maybe I should put it like that, most of the message that they preach are enemies of the cross. Right. Enemies of the cross. On, Anything that you draw attention to other than Jesus Christ, True. when we're talking about faith, when we're talking about our relationship with the Lord, Exactly. Anything you exalt above that is an enemy of the cross. Come on. Is an enemy of the cross. True. The prosperity gospel is an enemy of the cross. Right. The gospel of self-esteem is an enemy of the cross. Come on, brother Billy. Preachers that draw the limelight to themselves instead of Jesus are enemies of the cross. Tell it. The apostle Paul said, and I told you this last week. Uh -huh. I didn't come to you with with big swelling words and beautiful words. Mm. Because I did not, he said, I didn't come to you with those things because I did not want the cross to be, the spotlight to be taken off the cross. Oh, I didn't want it to become of no effect to you because you were looking at Paul. Yeah. Now, see, in that day, they had people that were saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of this one, I'm of that one. Mm -hmm. Getting their eyes, man's always done that. Getting yeah. their eyes off of Jesus yeah. and their eyes on man. Amen. And the Apostle Paul said, I want your eyes on one place. Right. When I'm preaching, when I'm ministering, when I'm teaching, I want your eyes on the message. And the message is Christ and Him crucified. Enemies of the cross. Go with me to Philippians 3, the third chapter. Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians, the third chapter. And I'm not going to try to hold you much longer. Philippians, the third chapter. <clears throat> Philippians 3 and 17 says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have for an example. Walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, and who mind earthly things. Now I want you to listen to that. I'm going to try to read it to you again. Now when he talks here about their God being their belly, he's not talking about, well, see all them fat people, they're the ones that you've got to look out for. No, he was talking about those that sought to devour the things of this world upon their own lust. He was talking about those that had their mind on earthly things and not on heavenly things. He's talking about what we today would call the prosperity message. Amen. He's talking about the message that would get your eyes off of Jesus Christ and onto temporal things in this world. Amen. He's talking about the message that would look at Brother Dave whenever he talks about both cars was broke down and his roof is leaking and, and, and the cats done ran off or maybe, God forbid, one of them died on him or something. And they'd look at him and say, well, you know what, brother? You must not be in God's will. Yeah. He's talking about Job's comforters. Amen. He's talking about those friends that would look at you and say, well, you know, you must not be doing what God wants you to do because if you did, then, then all this here wouldn't be happening to you. In other words, get your eyes off of Jesus and His finished work and through whom all blessings flow and get your eyes on you and think, well, what can I do to change this situation? You can't do nothing. Amen. In this life, there are turmoils, there are trials, there are things that we go through that has nothing to do yeah. with you not being close to God. Amen. Yeah. He's talking about those kinds of messages yeah. that would get your eyes off of the finished work of the cross. Come on, brother. That's good. They are enemies yeah. of the cross. And for the next time somebody tells you, well, you're sick. Must be out of God's will. Must be a sin in your life. Come on. The next time they tell you, well, what? You ain't got money to pay your light bill? Well, you're living below what God wants you to live. You need to have all the wealth of the world. That's what God wants for me. That's what He wants for you. Next time they tell you that, tell them to go home and read their Bible. Amen. Uh -huh. Tell them to read the whole thing. Exactly. Not just cherry pick some verses out of it, but to read the entire book. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Uh, many, can I say that again? Yeah. Amen. You won't hear that in Joel's church this morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them yeah. out of them all. Amen. Amen. Good. 
That's good. The Apostle Paul said there's trouble on every side, every That's hand. Good. Amen. Amen. True. Trouble on every hand. Trouble on every Keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Keep your eyes on Jesus. There's a better day coming. Amen. Your roof may be leaking now. Right. <laughs> but it won't leak when you get to glory. Amen. Right. <laughs> One old song says there's a hole in the roof where the rain comes in. There's a hole in the floor where it runs back out again. Amen. So your old house may be falling through. But Jesus said, oh, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Amen. I go to prepare a place for you where moths ain't going to eat it up. Where termites ain't going to be no problem. You ain't going to have no trouble with rusty roofs and holes in the floor. Amen. Amen. Oh. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. There's a better day of coming. Yeah. Amen. Come on. But these people that preach these other things are enemies yeah. of the cross. And the end is destruction. Right. Whose glory, look at the end of verse 19, whose glory is in their shame. Why? Who mind earthly things. All right. Nothing wrong today. <clears throat> Nothing wrong today with you having some money. I'm not preaching you into hell if you're rich. The more you got, the more you can help the work, the work of God. Yes, sir. That's where you're look at it. Amen. Lord, you bless me. So I'm going to bless the work of God. I'm going to do my part. Amen. Yes. Nothing wrong with that. Amen. I told somebody like this one time. Nothing wrong with you having the money. When money has you, that's something else. Yes, sir. That's something else. That's it. Amen. You got it. The love of money, the root of all evil. Amen. Those who preach any other message, those who preach that you can obtain holiness any other way, that message, they probably in ignorance have become an enemy of the cross. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. An enemy of the cross right. in ignorance. Mm -hmm. True. Those who preach any other message, those who preach, those who attempt to obtain holiness and justification by any other means are in danger of falling into this destruction that Paul talks about, about being an enemy of the cross. Remember this, any message that is anti-cross is anti-Christ. Yes, sir. And how shall we escape? Cain, whenever he brought his offering that was rejected, there was no escape for him because he did not have his trust in the right sacrifice. Those in Egypt, there was no escape for those that were out from under the blood because the only escape was the blood of Jesus. Those during the great flood... There was only one escape. A picture and a type of the cross of Christ, the Noah's Ark. If you were outside of that, there was no escape for you. For us today, there remains only one means of escape of the judgment to come. Do you remember we just got through talking about the fiery serpents that the children of Israel <clears throat> faced in the wilderness? Yes. And how that Moses put a brazen serpent on a pole and lifted it up? Sure. There was only one means of life for them. Come on. To obey God's Word and look to the snake that was on the pole. There's only one means of life for us today, and any other message is an enemy to the cross. Yes, sir. Go with me and close it today to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. There's so much. Everywhere you turn in this book, yes. you find what we've been preaching. True. Jesus Christ and Him crucified from start to finish. Hebrews the 10th chapter, and I don't know how long I've been preaching, but i got to give you this. How shall we escape so great, if we neglect so great a salvation? Hebrews 10 and 26 says, For if we sin willfully, and if you'll read the first part of this chapter, you'll find out that the Apostle Paul is preaching about the righteousness that is found in Jesus, the salvation that is found in the cross. He said, For if we sin willfully, the willful sin that he's talking about is when you take your trend, your faith and you put it on something else. Some other way than the crucified way. He said, for if we sin willfully, if we do that, if we take our faith off of Jesus and we put our faith in something else, whether it be another God, whether it be another man, whether it be our works or our deeds or our own self-righteousness, if we sin willfully, if we do that, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, after you have been told the way of salvation is only through Jesus Christ, whenever you take your faith and you transfer it to something else, the Apostle Paul said at the end of that verse, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. Now listen to me. A lot of people don't understand that verse. 
And they think that once you take your faith off of Jesus, that you can never come back from that. That you can never recover from that. We know that's not true because we see what happened with Peter. Peter denied him. He went out and wept. God yeah. let him preach the greatest sermon filled him with the Holy Ghost. Let him preach the greatest sermon ever preached there on the day of Pentecost. And all 5,000 people added to the church. So we know that that's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about is when you take your faith and you put it on anything other than Jesus, He's telling us that there remains. In other words, there is no other sacrifice for sins other than the cross of Christ. When you reject the cross, whether you've known Him or whether you've never known Him before, when you reject Him, there is no other way of escape. Come on. There is no other means of salvation. Yeah. You can say, I reject Jesus. Like Oprah said, well, Jesus is one of the ways. But there's got to be many ways, she said, to get to God. There has to be many ways. When you reject the only way, there is no other way for you. Right. You reject right. that which God has given for mankind's salvation. Amen. There remains no more sacrifice for sins. Come on, brother. Man. Stay with me. Verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. There's no more sacrifice. But when you reject the cross, you can be certain that judgment and fiery indignation will devour you. Judgment will be poured out upon you. You will suffer the judgment of hell for your sins because you refused to put your faith in the one that has already paid the price for your sins. Are you listening to me? Amen. There in Egypt that night, if you did not put the blood... In essence, if you did not put your faith in the one that had already taken your place, death had already been visited upon that lamb. If you didn't put your faith in that and you thought, well, I reject that, mm -hmm. you're fixing to pay the penalty yourself. Yes, sir. You're fixing to pay the penalty yourself. Exactly. Oh, my Lord. He that, now listen, verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Now, if you go to Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter, you know what he's talking about. That a capital crime had to have two or three witnesses in order to be able to, to sentence somebody to death. And if those people that broke Moses' law that was not perfect, do you hear me? Moses' law was incomplete, it was not perfect. If those people did not escape judgment, he says, of how much more sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith He was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. He said if those that broke the law did not escape judgment and the law was not perfect, the law was just, it was a temporal thing. If those people suffer judgment, how shall we escape if we have trodden underfoot the precious blood of the Lamb. If we have rejected the way of the cross, how shall we how shall we escape judgment today? If we neglect this, if we reject this, that's why this message is so important today because if you miss this, you miss it all. If you reject the cross, there is no going back and fixing it later on. When you stand before God, if you reject it, if you trod underfoot the precious blood of the Lamb and you rejected the sacrifice of His Son, there remains no more sacrifice for you. The cross of Christ has become of no effect for you like the Apostle Paul wrote so many times. How much sore punishment suppose ye Shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite under the Spirit of grace. Rejecting the cross, whether you've been saved once and you say, well, I'm not, I reject it, or whether you've never been saved. Rejecting the cross and choosing another way, there remains no more sacrifice for you until you once again turn to the cross. Amen. Do you hear that this morning? Yes, sir. Until you once again turn to the cross. Yes. The price that was paid for you, you have not accepted, so you will pay the price yourself. Yes, sir. Which is judgment, which is hell. Guaranteed. Which is hell, which is death. Absolutely. The second death. The dying that you will do forever. Yes. If you trod underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant Amen. as unholy. Unholy. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people 
It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Yes, sir. It is a fearful thing today to fall into the hands of a living God if you have trodden the blood of Jesus under your feet. Amen. If you have rejected the covenant. You see, it's not you know, we see the story of the prodigal son and how he went back and the father welcomed him with open arms. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be that way for millions and millions of people because they have rejected him. They will not stand before him as him as their father. They will stand before him with him as their judge. Yeah, right. With oh, yeah. Yeah. on judgment day. Is on judgment day. Stand in room only. Yes. Not even room to kneel and pray. Amen. Stand in room only on God's great judgment, judgment day. Oh my my. my. How shall we escape? So great. <laughs> How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How can the church escape if they neglect Come on, Brother Bill. so great Come on, bless him, a salvation? Bless him, Lord. Oh, Lord. Jesus name. You do not want to stand before God. Amen. Having rejected mm. and trodden underfoot mm. the blood of the Lamb. Oh, Lord. Yep. This precious gift that yep. God yep. has given to mankind. Yep. You don't want to stand before Him yep. and having rejected the only means of justification. The only means of sanctification in Lord, life today. Lord, help. How shall we escape? Lord, help family. Lord, help Lord. Us. Don't know this way. The truth How shall we God. escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Sisters, God. We have loved ones today that have neglected, Neighbors. that have rejected, that have trodden underfoot the, the blood of the covenant, the that have rejected the cross. That I have. Oh God, help us, Lord, to have a burden. Lord, that we'll pray and that we'll pray and that we'll pray. Jesus, help us. Oh God, that they'll come back Jesus, to the old man. rugged cross. Really? Lord, that your people, the church, yes. as we call it across yes. our land, yes. will yes. return to the old rugged yes. cross. Oh, oh, I will cling to the old rugged cross yes. till my trophies at last I lay down. Yes. Oh God, help us, Lord, to return, yes. to return to the old yes. rugged cross today. Yes, for the ones that have false No escape. No escape. There remains no more sacrifice for you today if you reject Jesus Christ and His precious blood. My, my, my. The Apostle Paul would talk to the Galatians and he would tell them, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? He would tell them that they had fallen from grace. You know why? Why? Because they had turned from the cross That's to other right. things. That's right. It had, the world doesn't know, the church doesn't know, because they talk about this big preacher, he sinned, that means he fell from grace. No, no. Mm. To fall from grace means that you turn your back on the cross mm. and you turn to other things for righteousness. Yes. That is when you fall from grace. Mm. Amen. Oh foolish Galatians who hath bewitched you mm. yeah. that you should not obey the truth. Mm. Oh God. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? There's only one way today, same way it's always been. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes. Lord, give us a burden for the lost. Yes. For the church. Yes. Oh, for the church today. My, my, my. Let's pray down a burden. Amen. And ask the Lord to save while there's still time. Hallelujah. We must work while it is day, for night soon cometh. Yeah. When no man shall work. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone Amen. else this morning have something before we go.